Hi, I'm Steve Clemens. I direct the American Strategy Program here at the New America Foundation, and I publish the blog, The Washington Note. I'm here with my friend Jamie Galbraith of the University of Texas at Austin, one of the country's really amazing prescient economists uh, who actually saw what was coming and did something about it. Hopefully he uh, sold short at the right time, I'm not sure. He's also author of The Predator State, uh, How Conservatives Abandon the Free Market and Why Liberals Should Too. And we're here today to ask him a few questions. Jamie, I, the first time I met you, we were talking about the costs involved in the, in the defense industry, uh, you know, a trillion or two for strategic defense. Uh, the next time I saw you, we were looking at the cost of the Iraq War, uh, which Joe Stiglitz has, has looked at as, you know, upwards of $3 trillion. We've talked about deficits and the problems they represent. And that's all before we get down to the meltdown that's happening right now in global markets. And I'm wondering, have we just forsaken and given up all the tools that we have to control the, the destiny of the U.S. economy? How do you see it? I think tools have to be reconstructed and rebuilt. Uh, there it is. So long as the United States exists as a country and as a government, the capacity is there to change things. You have to change philosophy, you have to change personnel, you have to change policy. Uh, but yes, you can do it if you have a sufficient determination to do it and if you have some idea of what, what specific strategies and policies should be pursued. What do you think it takes to set a bottom, or can we set a bottom in the way in which markets are working right now? We see the Dow down 560 points today. Uh, I was talking to a few economists today that said this just could keep going for a while. We could have convulsions up and down, but but you know there, there's no reason why the falling should stop at this point. This is a time to remember that uh, common stock is a way of providing equity to firms. That's their cushion against the, re the losses that they have to realize when the fact that their prospects are poor and that they've made poor investments on top of that uh, becomes clear. Uh, and that's uh, we're, we're in one of those moments. And yes, it could go on for quite a while. It, it's not the end of the world as far as the underlying economy is concerned. There, the economy functions on people's incomes, on their employment, on production, on trade. Uh, and it is possible to maintain the core functions of the economy without having a booming stock market. The problem we had is that in the 1990s and again in the 2000s, we financed the, the growth of the economy entirely through this, these, these channels of, in, the, in the Internet Information Technology bubble, it was the NASDAQ, uh, initial public offerings and venture capital. Uh, and in the, uh, in the Bush period, it was largely this incredibly corrupted housing finance system, which kept the economy going. We are going to have to find a new way of providing the financial underpinnings for economic growth. There, there's, that can be done. I mean, periodically it is done. Uh, you know, one of the things, I worked uh, on the Hill 30 years ago. Uh, uh, in one of my first meetings with Richard Bowling, who was chairman of the Rules Committee, he made a remark to me, it stuck in memory. He said, well, every generation or so, we have to buy back the capital stock. Um, I think we're actually pretty close to such a moment right now. What would you see, I know, I know you're close to uh, Barack Obama's team, and if Barack Obama is elected and, and comes into office, I would imagine that the portfolios he's going to inherit, both on the national security side and the economic side, are about as bad as any president has ever inherited. What would you say were the two or three or four things that are most vital to get right on the on the front end of, of, of his of his tenure? Well, the first thing to do is to stabilize the financial system. That's a liquidity problem. Uh, it's a Tell us what that means. It means making sure that people are not afraid uh, that ordinary, the funds for ordinary business purposes will disappear in bank failures uh, or in, the, in runs on money market funds. It means making sure that the banking system has access to, to the funds it needs in order, to, uh, in, order to, in order to finance ordinary business practices. At the same time, to make such a system, make that system work, you have to you have to re-regulate. You have to put the, ban the banking system under effective supervision, so that where institutions are insolvent, they don't run up losses and basically expand the the, the, the problem that we have now, leading to a bigger financial crash shortly afterwards. You have to deal with the housing issue. There are a million foreclosed houses and many more that will be foreclosed if nothing is done. People have to be kept in their houses to the maximum extent possible just to stabilize neighborhoods and pre prevent that implosion from continuing. You have to stabilize state and local governments. They are, you know, revenues come from property taxes, they are imploding. 
if, as they cut expenditure and capital expenditure, that not only hurts the standard of living of the population, sure. but it also hurts the economy because people lose jobs and the, those people can't afford to pay the mortgages. So the housing issue becomes becomes compounded. Uh, you have to stabilize retirement incomes. You have to try and, and, and make sure that people who are elderly or near elderly are not cutting back their expenditures too much because of their capital losses. So those are those are el the early steps that have to be, I think, gotten right to put the economy on a more stable plan. When you were looking at government expenditures that we're going to need to, part of this is keeping you know, the system liquid mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and dealing with this mess we're in. Another part of it, as we've talked about before, is looking at you know, sort of the crappy conditions of the internal infrastructure of the country. Do we need a sort of modern WPA, Works Progress Administration, to both reinvest in the country but to keep, you know, the real economy chugging along in ways? Yes. Uh, physical capital reconstruction has been neglected for 30 years and is clearly should be now be a very high priority. Uh, and in addition to that, of course, there's an energy agenda that has to be, that should be pursued, and an opportunity to pursue it. There's no reason why you can't get in now, start the program of changing the way we consume energy, changing the way we produce it, dealing with the energy security problem and the climate change problem. Those are, those I think, the, the, the medium-term agenda and the way in which the economy will grow, the, set the direction, and both the public and the private sector will follow in that direction eventually. That seems to me to be the medium-term strategy for dealing with, for re-launching economic growth. There's an enormous, we do have one great advantage, the country does, which is it turns out that the U.S. dollar is still the safe haven. Uh, the U.S. government can finance itself short-term for practically nothing, uh, long-term for 3 4%. Uh, no other country in the world is in that position. Uh, the Europeans have, uh, might have had a plausible alternative to the dollar. Turns out they really don't. And there's, a, there's a great deal of instability in Europe right now. Um, and of course, you, you know better than I do that the, the, the Japanese yen is sure. not going to take that position, and certainly not the Chinese RMB. Uh, so uh, the potential here to uh, remains for the next administration to take the initiative, to seize the initiative, and get things done. And just the last question, when I look at it, and I look at the amount of money that, that the President's got to go before Congress each year to spend uh, on the Iraq War, the supplementals that we've seen, it just seems to me inconceivable that any U.S. President, John McCain or uh, Barack Obama, will be able to continue to do that in light of what we're seeing. So is part of the uh, silver lining of this uh, tremendous uh, financial meltdown, essentially, do you feel that the, that the Iraq War and some of our own external uh, pretensions uh, are going to be wound down uh, more quickly than they would otherwise? It's clearly time to wind up the war. It's clearly time to reestablish collective security as the basis of U.S. foreign policy. Uh, I think we have to do that, not only for the resource reasons you just mentioned, but also for reestablishing trust in the reliability of the United States as a partner in the world. Uh, and that is important for the financial picture. We're not trustworthy people are not going to place their funds with us indefinitely. So there is a bit of a silver lining, but I think in addition to that, one can say it's also responsible policy on the merits in, 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 in the Iraqi case. This is an exercise which is ready to be learned up. Well, Jamie, you're the toughest working progressive economist I know. <laughs> Keep it up. Uh, don't get any sleep and, and come back to Washington often. It's not been easy. To Thanks very much. Thank you.